Th thank you, Greg. Uh, let me first begin by thanking both um, uh, David Leach and Greg Vitale for the hard work that they've done relative to uh, passing the moratorium on additional uh, leasing of our state forest. So now, you know, as, as we stand here, over half of, of the state forest system in Pennsylvania uh, uh, that, that overlays the Marcellus Shale Clay area, um, over half of the state forest has been leased out uh, for, for, for deep and shallow gas drilling. So over half of our state forest has been leased. Not all of it has been, not all of that has been drilled yet, but it will. And, and the moratorium bill that we passed in the House says we need to take a time out. We need to take a time out, uh, observe that, that drilling that will happen on the 50 plus percent of the state forest over the next three years and let, let's evaluate the socioeconomic and the environmental impact before we decide what to do going forward after that. So this is an issue of importance to everybody that uses Pennsylvania's forest. Not, not, not just the, the bird watchers and the hikers and the campers, but the anglers. So people enjoy catching wild brook trout in our, in our exceptional value watersheds. Uh, hunters, anglers, berry pickers, hikers, bird watchers, everybody. Everybody who uses Pennsylvania forest. And, and also want to just point out that at times of uh, uh, you know, economic challenges in our state, more and more people vacation close to home. When I grew up, we did, you know, my dad never had the wherewithal to take us to the shore. And what the shore was, it was the lake at the state park. And for a lot of Pennsylvanians, that's their, that's our principal form of recreation. So it is vitally important that the Senate move House Bill 2235 uh, before we break for the summer when the, when the budget is done. Also want to reiterate my support, not just for a, a, separate, a reasonable severance tax, uh, to be to be put in place uh, e efficiently and effectively to collect revenue without placing undue onerous burdens on either the industry or on the revenue collectors but as important or even more importantly to make sure that the revenues derived from a severance tax are used to invest back in our environment and back in our local communities um, as we as we gather today House Bill 235 is poised for action in the state. That bill provides for taxes on, on, several, on several items, uh, but the most important component as far as I'm concerned is the, is the severance tax language. Unfortunately, that language would, would allocate 80% of the revenues derived from the from severance tax would be allocated to the state general fund, and only 20% to local government and conservation and environment. I have an amendment uh, that largely modeled after my House Bill 2443 that would in fact allocate the tax base 50% 50, 50 to the state, 50% uh, for, for, for local conservation environment community needs. But I recognize the, the, uh, the difficulty of this year's fiscal budget and the challenges. So under my amendment, we will allocate the first 50 million from the severance tax to go to the state and then any amount generated above that would be distributed 50-50. And I fund things such as the Environmental Stewardship Fund, County Conservation Districts, uh, the good work done by our Fish and Boat Commission and Game Commissions, some funding for hazardous sites cleanup, lie heap, uh, the local government account as well. And I think most importantly, one of the most important areas of difference with House Bill 325 is the fact that I allocate some money for a oil and gas environmental disaster recovery account. Because you know, you never know when a bust out or a blow up could happen. And you need to have to make sure that the state has funds available so that we can't find the responsible party, or if the responsible party doesn't have the resources, or they're not acting sufficiently or prudently in our judgment, the state needs to be able to take, to take action to deal with the environmental disaster. So we need that kind of emergency disaster relief fund. I just want to end up by saying this, you know, Growing Greener has been a bipartisan success story. It was created in 1999 um, under the Ridge administration, um, former DEP secretary in the, in, the, in the rear of the room can, can testify to this, but so it grew out of bipartisan support for the environment, okay, and it, it was expanded in the first years of, of uh, Governor Rendell's tenure. We have protected more than 33,000 acres of Pennsylvania farmland, 
42,000 acres of open spaces have been preserved. We've invested in 234 community parks and more than 1,600 acres of abandoned mine lands have been created. And we've, we've worked to protect and restore the water quality in 400, over 400 watersheds. And we've done that uh, through, through at, you know, during those periods of time, significant state investment uh, to the tune of one point, we actually invested $200 million from the Commonwealth in these programs. Unfortunately, that is scheduled and is likely to be reduced down to $15 million um, as, soon as, as soon as 2012. So clearly our investments in our environment uh, have taken a hit over the last several budget cycles. We need to recommit ourselves to reinvesting in Pennsylvania's environment in a strong bipartisan fashion as we have in the past. And in, a, in an atmosphere that, that is all too often charged uh, with partisanship, especially as we move forward in the budget discussions, I think it's really important that, that we recognize that by working together, Democrat and Republican, urban, suburban, and rural citizens, these citizens, all of us working together as legislators to look out after their interests, is the right thing for Pennsylvania's environment and the right thing for our citizens as well. Uh, I look forward to continue working uh, with my colleagues in the House and Senate on both the moratorium and on putting a reasonable severance tax in place that, that, that is not onerous to the industry, but that makes the significant and critical investments in our communities and in our environment, conservation, and wildlife management agencies. Thank you.